starts right now. A chaos in Von Army today. The city's board of commissioners met this morning to vote on the budget and tax rate after a failed attempt last week. But an issue with the amount of public notice meant it was delayed once again. But forget about all of that. Yeah. Garrett Berger tells us why one city employee was the focal point for many who were there. And that's what kept this meeting boiling. She doesn't live here. She don't a meeting room at capacity, an upset crowd, even an arrest. Ow, ow, ow. On top of it, votes on the Von Army city budget and property tax rate delayed again. This meeting was embarrassing. It should have never been called. People in the small Bear County city have been seething over their city administrator, Valerie Nath. Much of the recent angst has to do with a proposed budget she posted, but which has since been scrapped that included an $80,000 salary for her. A lot of our policemen that are here work for free. They're not even getting paid. Nath tells us the commissioners had previously considered not allowing her or the police chief to hold other jobs. She says she makes about 57000 at the city now, but work on the side gets her to about 80. You know, if you want to do that, you know, you're going to have to pay me the difference. It was just a conversation. It okay. was just to see if the numbers were even possible. Okay. But you have to publish it, right? You, you publish the highest and you come down from that. There was also anger over a now defunct proposal to institute a property tax in the famously property tax free Von Ormy. Naf said there had been concern about how to cover the front end costs of a reimbursable federal sewer grant. It was just, we're going to post it at this level and the commissioners can choose any level, including zero whatever they decide. Mayor Casey Homer had the budget NAF put forward replaced with his own, which does not include a property tax or any salary for the administrator position. We're working on uh, amending the budget to be reflective of the next physical year and what it should look like. City commissioners will meet October 20th to take up the budget and tax rate again. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Safety, the number one thing that parents worry about, and that's why in less than an hour, parents from San Antonio's largest school district are meeting with local and federal law enforcement discussing vaping and fentanyl. Yeah, the meeting is happening at the Northside Activity Center at NISD. It's where our Stephanie Jimenez joins us live. Stephanie, I understand that vaping is a big problem in schools, as is fentanyl, but why is tonight's meeting combining both of those? Well, basically, these are both things, Steve, that parents are very worried about. And that's why starting at six o'clock, the room that you see here behind me is going to be packed with parents as well as students. They are eagerly waiting to hear from the DEA and also a representative from the U.S. Attorney's Office. And NISD says that parents are basically starved for information about these very important subjects, uh, keeping their kids safe from fentanyl as well, fentanyl as, well as vaping. Vaping has especially been a problem at NISD. Our Lee Waldman did a story yesterday on the night beat talking about House Bill 114, which is now law. So now children caught with vapes on school property are automatically sent to an alternative school. NISD just started a second chances program to help those students who are first time offenders. Last year, we know this district had more than 1,400 disciplinary hearings for vaping. Now, when it comes to fentanyl, which according to the state health department kills five times Texans every day. The director of counseling at NISD says it is essential for parents to learn about the risks so that they can talk to their kids. When we begin looking at things of the world through fear, we don't always see the most obvious of things. Having information, having knowledge eases that fear base and you can be more rational in your ability to see what's out there, to listen to what's out there, to overhear conversations with your students. Now, again, this meeting is going to start here at 6 o'clock. We know that about 50 parents have signed up to attend. The only question is what parents are going to glean from today's message so that they can go home and take that message to their children. We're live here at NISD. Stefania Jimenez, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Stephanie. We want to remind you that if you need more information about the dangers of fentanyl and the devastating effects on families and dreams, KSAT 12 is here to help. Just scan the QR code on the screen right now. It's going to take you directly to our Fighting Fentanyl page. And there you're going to find stories from those who somehow survived overdoses and firsthand accounts of parents whose children were lost to the illegal drug. It is readily available to you anytime. 
Also happening tonight, the last community conversation hosted by Bear County Judge Peter Sakai. It's an opportunity for you to speak with the county judge about issues that concern you. It's going to be at the UTSA Park West Field House. That's off 1604, not far from West Hausman Road on the city's northwest side. That session begins at 530. A man who at first looked like a good Samaritan helping out a stabbing victim, now a murder suspect. San Antonio police piecing together what really happened over the last month. They arrested 25-year-old Israel Cortez, who is now accused of stabbing Robert Nieves to death. Investigators say initially Cortez told them that Nieves showed up at his house already beaten up with blood coming from a stab wound. Police say he called 911 to get help, but then he left and Nieves died at the hospital. Later, detectives say two witnesses told them that Cortez had admitted to the shooting, or rather the stabbing, and one of them said he saw the two men together 30 minutes before that call to 911. Cortez now charged with murder. His bond set at $200,000. The police say an 18 year old learned the hard way that a moving train is not a toy. They say he is fortunate he just ended up in the hospital. Officers at the scene tell us the young man on the tracks near the intersection of Burleson and Austin streets about 1230 last night. They say he attempted to play chicken and was hit by that train. He was taken to the hospital with a cut to his head and a broken arm. Lucky that's all he got. Officials with the Union Pacific, the company that operates the train involved, say that incident is under investigation. If you've been outside at all, you know how humid it is. That's how it feels. And that mixed with the heat feels, well, icky. Technical term there. Yeah. Adam, we're hoping it pays off in rain, all this ickiness, sooner rather than later. Yeah, you know, it takes humidity to make rain, and it looks like we have still good rain chances into tomorrow. Also, yeah, it felt a little icky out there today with the high humidity and the high temperature. 97, the high today, that's a record. It ties the record that dates back to 1929. Widespread 90s, we do have a taste of fall on the way in the days ahead. Right now, New Braunfels 98, Seguin 98. We're gonna be noticeably and significantly cooler than that. It's just gonna take some time. A Little bit of action on the radar off to the east of town. Sea breeze showers are very insignificant. Those isolated stray showers end this evening before sunset, then partly cloudy. Temperatures falling through the 80s. A bit breezy with a southeast wind at 10 to 20. We're gonna time out the rain tomorrow, when it moves in, when it moves out, how much we could get, and then when the cooler fall-like air arrives. Can't wait for that rain. Thank you, Adam. He calls himself the most bipartisan member of the House of Representatives, and the man he wants to defeat, he calls the most divisive in Congress. Talking about Congressman Colin Allred, who's running for the United States Senate, and he has his sights set on defeating Ted Cruz. I sat down with Allred for the latest edition of Spreester Sessions. He has competition for the Democratic nomination, namely San Antonio State Senator Roland Gutierrez. But Allred says Cruz is his main focus, and he and Gutierrez have talked about how they'll handle the primary. Do you have a gentleman's agreement with Roland Gutierrez to not attack each other, tear each other down before you even face Ted Cruz? Well, I, I think so. It's, it's just not my style, and I think people will see that, uh, that you know, I'm certainly try to stick to the substance. But also, I think that the best way to win the primary, as I said, is to show that I'm the best person to beat Ted Cruz. All right, says the border, how to keep growing the Texas economy and just finding common ground. The big differences he has with Cruz. The latest edition of Spreester Sessions will be available on KSAT.com and the KSAT YouTube page after the night beat tonight. We also have our interview with Roland Gutierrez that's there right now. We'd like to sit down with Senator Ted Cruz as well, but he may wait on that interview until he knows exactly who his Democratic opponent is. We want to tell you about a trouble spot that's happening right now at 410 and Northwest Military. What you see there is a tow truck. Looks like there was a little fender bender or a stalled car. They're going to try and haul somebody off. Meantime, they've blocked off that far left breakdown lane, and that is causing folks to slow down a bit. Again, a bit of a slow up here at 410 and Northwest Military. Our friends from the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center are standing by in Studio B and they need your calls and your help tonight. We are going to tell you why coming up. I want to give you a quick look at what we're working on for you.
Mother of her children speaking out about the case that ended in a mistrial this summer. Alicia De Leon Diaz spoke to us as Guadalupe Contreras had a court hearing today on that case. Why she says he's innocent. A growing concern in the world of self storage units. How secure is your unit? Coming up at six, we reveal the shocking statistics and how one man's valuables were stolen effortlessly. And it's like Shark Tank, but for local businesses. It's called Tech Fuel, a local competition hosted by Bear County and Tech Block, where the winning business gets $100,000. We're going to look at how a past winner is working to change the landscape for young women's health. All that and more today on the News at 6. Right now, you have a chance to make a difference in someone's life during our KSAT community event today. We, along with our community partner, trying to raise awareness and donations for the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center. Yeah, blood and money donations. Our Myra Arthur taking a very special interest in this mission. She's recruiting you to help her, and she's joining us with how you can do just that. She has a couple of guests with her, Myra. I sure do, Stephen. Ursula, I'm recruiting you because I was recruited by the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center. They challenged me to raise $15,000 for this nonprofit that provides incredible life-saving resources. And Jared Zavala, his mom, Evelyn, you guys know that very well. Jared, yes. you are a 13-year-old leukemia survivor. That is incredible mm -hmm. in itself. You relied so much on blood transfusions. What did that do for you when you got those? Um, I can really feel a difference because it was like I was supercharged and like I had more energy and like beforehand it was like I felt groggy. Like I, I felt like I just didn't want to do anything. You said it was like in a video game, like when Mario gets really, like when you, levels like, up, right? Yes. <laughs> it, it had to be for okay. you, Evelyn, as a mom, watching your child go through that. I can't imagine it, but to see the difference that that transfusion made for him, what was that like to witness? It was truly amazing because you, I mean, you see that before we've seen him, you know, down and at times in the very beginning, we didn't realize why he was, you know, looking so very out of it. I mean, aside from him, you know, actually having leukemia and stuff. Um, but then, you know, once we'd get his like lab work back and they're like, oh, you know, he's, he's low in his blood counts and he needs a blood transfusion. And then that would make sense. And then when he'd get the blood, then we see him come back to life and get color all over again. It was truly amazing to see. And, and so, so many times people think of blood donations needed for a car accident or a, a mass casualty situation, yeah. something like that. But mm -hmm. you don't think about the people like you, Jared, the individuals who are fighting really big diseases that need that donation. Thank you so much for sharing some time with us, Jared. That's awesome. I'm so proud of you. Yes. Thank you. 13 or 351 1363. That is the number to call. We are so close to that $15,000 goal. We started this uh, five o'clock show around $12,000. Let's see where we can end up. Stephen Ursel, we'll send it back to you in the studio. Thank you, Myra. And yeah, 351 1363. You can call and make an appointment to make a blood donation or like Myra said, money also greatly appreciated. Let's make sure the five o'clock show beats the noon show. We got over a thousand dollars donated during the noon show. You had let's an do hour to do it though. That's right. Okay, you think we can do it in 30 minutes? Let's beat it. All right, let's see. All right, look at those white fluffy clouds out there. Is that telling us something? Not really, not okay, those clouds. Right, yeah, <laughs> it's hoping. telling us we had some daytime heating and some clouds bubbled up, uh, but the layers to the clouds does tell us a little bit. We're getting some moisture in from the Pacific aloft, and that's going to help our rain chances tomorrow. Now, the first half of tomorrow is when we're likely to see the rain. The humidity, that'll be swept away by Friday evening. And then the cooler weather, more fall-like air, that's going to settle in for the weekend. So yes, a cold front is coming tomorrow, but that's mainly just going to be driving the rain. The cooler, drier, less humid air is going to take some time to move back in. So take a look at our rain chances tomorrow. Notice 5 a.m. only 30%. And this is for Bear County and immediate surrounding counties as well. Then we're up to 60% at 7 a.m. Then we top out at 70%. 9, 10, 11 a.m., even on into noon. By the afternoon, our rain chances really taper off as the activity pushes to the south. Some highly isolated showers. 
Some parts of Gonzales County just outside of the city of Gonzales and outside of Yorktown. This is very limited and it's not going to last very long. Most of the rain today closer to Houston again, kind of like yesterday with that conveyor belt of moisture, but also a zone of showers and storms and even some severe storms potentially off into North Texas. This is along the cold front that's headed our way. This is our front and it's already producing some good rainfall. I don't think we'll see as much rain as other parts of Texas and what they're seeing right now along the Red River, but at least we'll get some rain out of this. Here's our future cast. I like this model in terms of its timing and how it displays the rainfall tomorrow through the night tonight. It's all off to the north of us. First thing in the morning at sunrise moves into the hill country. Then throughout the morning commute, we're expecting that rain to move into San Antonio, the Highway 90 corridor by 9, 10 a.m. and give us the off and on showers, thunderstorms and embedded downpours. And of course, in terms of accumulations, it all depends on who gets those lucky downpours and even if you can get a couple of them. The noon hour, lunch hour, still some areas of rain lingering. The whole batch though starting to move south and by the time schools let out, most of the rain's going to be out of here and by tomorrow evening, I anticipate just clouds lingering and the rain to be gone out of our area. Up to two inches possible in localized areas. I think that's going to be the maximum amount, but there is that potential. Most of us, however, will see a little bit less than that. As for the drop in the humidity that we see with these fronts, you need to be patient. Still going to be humid tomorrow. Dew points well into the 60s. Friday, most of the day is going to be humid, but I think by Friday at sunset, right around kickoff for Friday night football games, that's when the humidity drops. So you'll feel that change when you're outside Friday evening, especially if you're attending a game. And then this weekend, very low humidity with dew points down in the low to mid 50s. Let's talk temperatures and how they change. Record setting here in San Antonio today. Some 70s behind the front right now. You'll need patience for highs in the 70s. Tomorrow, 77 in the morning, 83 for the high temperature, so still in the 80s. And then we're 87 on Friday. We actually warm up a little bit before that cooler air comes in for the weekend. We're expecting high temperatures in the mid to upper 70s with some low humidity as well. All right, looking forward to all that action. Thank you. All right, does Wimby know the playbook? He is learning the playbook. Ah, okay. Learning the Spurs playbook doesn't sound like it's the easiest thing to do. Coming up, it's day two, Spurs training camp. We got to talk to Wimby, and he's talking about that playbook. And in Major League Baseball, the Rangers going for the two-game sweep, and Josh Young factored into this one. Coming up. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's it came later than I expected, but yeah, finally, <laughs> and I'm glad he yelled at me. Wimby has already felt the wrath of Pop just a little bit, and he's happy for that. He says in Big Board Sports. Victor and the Spurs are hard at work getting ready for the regular season, which tips off three weeks from today for the Silver and Black. Day two of training camp is in the books, and today we got to speak with Wimby. He told us all the information he's getting is coming very, very fast, as in the set plays, principles, etc. things he's never seen before and that he doesn't know. Now, he was asked if he has to take a playbook home to study. It's really, it's really personal. It really depends from one another, but it's... Honestly, it's. I've talked about uh, the coaches about yeah, getting more information, and they, they keep telling me to to not worry that it's gonna come naturally, because like it's gonna be, it's gonna come eventually. And when it does, watch out NBA. Spurs forward Doug McDermott, who is entering his third season with the Spurs, is impressed with Wimby's game. He does some things that you know you can't really explain. That you fans will just be surprised by. He just so coordinated for how tall he is and just um, a very unselfish player can make any play and uh, very comfortable shooting from anywhere so um, it's gonna be a, a lot of a lot of fun this year the fun starts monday night when the spurs open the preseason at the okc thunder at 7 p.m
This Tampa Bay fan got all dressed up for game two between the Rays and Rangers this afternoon. Texas going for the wild card sweep. Top four, Rangers up one nothing. Runner on second base when San Antonio's very own Josh Young hits one to right field. Josh Lowe charging, dives, but he can't make the catch. That scores a run to make it two to nothing. Texas Young races around second base, slides in the third for an RBI triple. That was part of a four-run inning for the Rangers. Evan Carter hits a two-run shot right here moments later, and it is four zip Texas and the Rangers go on to win at seven to one. They will face the Baltimore Orioles in the ALDS. And at last check, the Twins were leading the Blue Jays two to nothing in the bottom of the fifth. And the winner of that series will go on to face the Houston Astros. We will be right back after the break. Looking ahead, still 80s the next few days, but by this weekend, that's when we see those highs drop back down into the mid to upper 70s. And morning lows could even dip down into the upper 50s starting Sunday. Ah, glorious weekend. Thank you, Adam, and thank you for watching the News at 5. See you back here at 6.